Olaf Palm was the Swedish Prime Minister from 1982 until his death in 1986. He had just left the cinema with his wife Lisbeth Palm when someone appeared and shot him, killing him instantly. The killer also shot Lisbeth Palm, but did not kill her. Who killed him? No one knows for sure, but believed to be Stig Engström, a graphic designer who killed himself in 2000. At least that's what the Swedish police said. The Swedish jurist Christer Peterson says, he acted as we believe the killer would act. In my opinion, Stig Engström is unquestionably the suspect of the crime. But as I said, it is not 100% sure that it was Engström, which leaves room for several theories. Stig Engström was born on February 26, 1934, in Mumbai, India. His parents were Swedish, so in 1946 they moved to Sweden. He studied at Sigtunaskolan Humanistiska Leroverket, an elite Swedish school, interestingly the same one that Olaf Palm studied. However, he never graduated or went to university, instead he did mandatory military service, then he studied to become a graphic designer which he achieved, and he lived off of it until his retirement. But why would Stig Engström kill Olaf Palma? Well, Stig Engström didn't like him, because Engström had different political views than Palma. Another reason is that Engström knew how to use firearms, since as I said he did military service, and the journalist Thomas Pedersen said, Engström was a neglected individual who lived in the shadows and wanted to attract attention. But as I said, they are not 100% sure. For example, his ex-wife said, he was too cowardly, he wouldn't hurt a fly. So why was it only in 2020 that Engström's suspicion arose? At first, the agents did not properly isolate the crime scene, allowing the police cordon to pass through for citizens to deposit flowers, which damaged the investigation area. The witnesses managed to leave the scene before being questioned. One of the bullets was only discovered days later by a passerby. Afterwards, of the 25 people who witnessed the crime or the fleeing criminal, nothing was valid enough to identify the perpetrator, knowing that the majority described him as a man of 180 meters and aged between 30 and 50 years. And I think that's all about Engstrom, let's go to the next theory. Christer Pettersson was born in Solna, a city very close to Stockholm. Pettersson was a drug user, and he was part of local drug groups. In 1970, he stabbed a man to death in central Stockholm during a street fight in what the Swedish press dubbed a bayonet murder. After less than two years, he was released and continued a life of petty crime, which financed his alcohol and drug abuse. In 1988, almost three years later, Pettersson was detained and accused of Palma's murder after an investigation, which appeared to have started based on rumors about his involvement among fellow small-time criminals and drug addicts. The initial investigation had uncovered little of significance, but once detained, Pettersson was picked out from a 10-person police lineup by Lisbeth Palm. Lisbeth Palm's identification, combined with statements by acquaintances of Pettersson, who stated that he had been near the scene of the crime at the night of the murder, led to a 1989 conviction for murder. Pedersen was sentenced to life imprisonment. Just a few months later, however, Pedersen was released on appeal. The reasons were, the murder weapon has not been identified, lack of a clear motive for the killing and doubts about the reliability of Mrs. Palm's testimony. However, in 2001, Pedersen gave an interview when he say, sure as hell it was me who shot, but they can never nail me for it. The weapon is gone. He later retracted the statement and said he was not involved in the killing. After Pedersen's death 2004, in 2006, associates of Pedersen claimed that he had confessed to them his role in the murder, but with the explanation that it was a case of mistaken identity. Allegedly, Pedersen had intended to kill Sigvard Sedergren, a drug dealer who customarily walked along the same street at night and resembled Palm, both in appearance and dress. What I see is that a person faints, and it is Christer Pedersen, who is holding a gun says Östlund, a Pedersen's friend, in a documentary. In 1996, Colonel Eugene de Kock, a former South African police officer, gave evidence to the Supreme Court in Pretoria, alleging that Palmy had been shot and killed because he strongly opposed the apartheid regime and Sweden made substantial contributions to the African National Congress. African National Congress is a political party, which Palmy supported for being anti-apartheid, if you don't know. Apartheid was a system of institutionalized racial segregation that existed in South Africa from 1948 to the early 1990s. Back to Eugene de Kock, claimed he knew the person who killed Olaf Palmy. Who killed Olaf Palmy was Craig Williamson, a South African police and a spy. A few days later, 
former police captain Dirk Koitsi, who used to work with Williamson, identified Anthony White, a former Rhodesian Selu scout with links to the South African security services, as Palm's actual murderer. Then a third person, Swedish mercenary Bertel Whedon, living in northern Cyprus since 1985, was named as the killer by former police L. Peter Caselton, who had worked undercover for Williamson. In 2010, in a TV channel called Efterlist, Tommy Lindstrom, who was the head of Swedish CID at the time of Olaf Palme's assassination. After being asked who he believed was behind the assassination of the Prime Minister, Lindstrom without hesitating said, Apartheid South Africa is the number one suspect, and the motive for this was to stop the payments that the Swedish government secretly paid through Switzerland to the African National Congress. In 2005, historian John Bondesson released a book called Blood on the Snow, The Killing of Olaf Palma. In this book he says that Palme's murder was linked to the arms trade to India, and Palme had used his friendship with Rajiv Gandhi to secure a 8.4 billion Swedish kronor deal for the Swedish armaments company Bofors to supply the Indian army. Palme did not know that behind his back Bofors had used a shady company called AE Services to bribe Indian government officials to conclude the deal. And this is real. This became known as Beaufort Scandal. Returning. Bondesson says, Palme had met with the Iraqi ambassador to Sweden, Muhammad Saeed al-Sahaf. The two discussed Beaufort's. The ambassador probably told Palme about Beaufort's activities, infuriating Palme. Afraid because he knows the truth, Beaufort's or AE services may be killed Olaf Palme. The Swedish journalist Anders Leopold, in his 2008 book, the Swedish tree shall be brought down, makes the case that the Chilean fascist Roberto Tiem killed Olaf Palm. According to Leopold, Palmi was killed because he had gratuitously given asylum to a great number of leftist Chileans following the coup that overthrew Salvador Allende in 1973. In 1971, Olaf Palm said that he blamed the fear of the masses on anarchists and people with long hair and people with beards. Following up on this suggestion, Hans Holmer, the Stockholm police commissioner, who arrested a number of Kurds living in Sweden. The Kurdistan Workers' Party was allegedly responsible for the murder. The lead proved inconclusive, however, and ultimately led to Holmer's removal from the Palm murder investigation. Turkish newspapers have several times claimed that the PKK has admitted the murder, but the PKK have always denied all claims. In 1998, the PKK said that there is a strong indication that the Turkish side is trying to discredit the PKK using Olaf Palm's murder. Also, many Kurdish organizations believe that the initial claims were propaganda of the Turkish government. The murder of Olaf Pale was over 37 years ago, but to this day it remains unanswered. Doesn't look like this case will be solved and will probably be a mystery forever.